hello cousins welcome back to my channel i know it's been a long time since i've given you a cancer journey update so that's what i'm gonna do today so where should i begin i guess i can begin from the beginning as you all know i was diagnosed on april 27th with stage two um invasive ductal carcinoma breast cancer in my left breast um, after diagnosed after being diagnosed i um, had a lumpectomy where i had that portion of the tumor removed as well as one well i had three lymph nodes removed one lymph node was positive okay then um i was given an access it's covered up right now but um uh, access so that I will be able to receive chemotherapy. Most people receive a port that will be located at their chest. I opted to receive a pick line. I mean, <clears throat> I think he only did it because I'm a nurse, uh, because it's a higher risk for infection or a higher risk of you getting it pulled out by mistake. But I just explained to him, you know, I'm a nurse, I can manage it. So he was like, I've never given a pick line to an outpatient before. He said, but I'll do it for you. So I was able to get a pick line. It's less invasive than a port, but it's more risk with a with the pick line. Okay. So after I received my access, then um I was given a treatment plan. I'm gonna see if I'm able to put like a timeline down at the bottom or somewhere on here so you can see how everything kind of lines up. And hopefully I don't leave too much of the big stuff out. Okay, so my treatment plan consists of, for the chemotherapy, it consists of um, four rounds of adriomycin doxyrubin. I think that's the name of it. It's also known as um, the red devil. It's four rounds of that. And this is the most harshest of the treatment plan that I would receive. That's what I was told. <clears throat> okay. Before I started the, um, I'm not sure if it was before or right as I got like my first dose or whatnot, um, I asked for a PET scan. So a PET scan is kind of like a, a CT scan or CAT scan or MRI where you lay in the machine and it takes pictures on the inside of your body. Well, it did it from my skull to the thighs, I believe. And it's basically checking for other areas of cancer. So I asked for that because I kind of wanted a baseline to know where I'm starting from. But immediately after I asked for it, I had immediate regret because nothing but worries were there. All right. So we're waiting on those results to come back. I received two rounds of the, um, the AC, AKA Red Devil. Um, and it was one dose every two weeks so you, like you get your your treatment you have the rest of that week or whatever and then the next week off and then you go back for another dose okay i received two a total of two doses the third dose he put the treatment on hold and i'm like why are we putting it on hold because they keep saying that this um cancer is aggressive so I'm like, why are we putting this on hold? Well, when the PET scan results came back, it showed what they call hot spots. So it showed a hot spot on my liver as well as on my part of my vertebrae or shoulder blade. I'm not sure. Somewhere up in here. So he wanted to stop the treatment. So we can investigate, you know, basically to see what those hot spots are, if it's cancer or if it's benign or whatnot. So I was like, well, still go ahead and give me the treatment so we could be working on it because, you know, the treatment should be able to knock that out as well. He was like, well, the treatment can give a false positive because I had to get like CTs and MRIs of the liver at this point. I had to get a biopsy of the liver. Oh, it was a scary trying time to think that this cancer could have already spread to my liver and other areas in my body. So I had the liver biopsy done. It came back. I think they said it's kind of like fatty tissue. 
so it's not cancerous and then this came back as nothing as well <clears throat> thank god for that so that was clear so he actually restarted my treatment my treatment plan okay so at that point i um i finished the last two rounds of the ac and then we um started on the 12 round of taxil now taxil it was 12 rounds once a week not every other week like the other one and that made me so nervous because i'm like it take me about two weeks for my body to bounce back how am i going to bounce back not even within a week time to get another treatment and they were saying well this one is uh, not as strong as the ac you should be able to bounce back all right so for whatever reason, well, I'm not going to say for whatever reason. Uh, ever since I started the chemotherapy, I have uh, what you call is tachycardia. So my heart rate beat faster than normal. A normal heart rate is between 60 and 100. And I was a little above, <clears throat> above 100 resting. And I know at times I could feel it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm tachycardia. Okay. <clears throat> then as I got ready to go in for my first round of the taxel, it was kind of high. I'm anxious at this time. I can realize I have anxiety. I really do have anxiety. I feel it as I'm driving to the hospital in the parking lot, walking up to the oncology floor. I have anxiety. I mean, not the kind that's making me hyperventilate, but I feel it throughout my body. My body feel anxious. My body feel jittery. My heart rate is increased. I have anxiety. So we're sitting there. Um, and when she get ready to hook up my fluids, not even hook up the, um, the chemotherapy, she hooked up the fluid and I, all of a sudden I was like, I, I'm, I'm about to be sick. So I started vomiting. This is the first time I vomited the entire time that I have been on chemo, which is one of the very things that I was very afraid of is being sick the entire time. But thankfully I have not been sick and vomiting. So I started vomiting that particular day, but it was before the chemo. So we were like, that's weird. That's weird. I was like, yeah, that is weird. So she gave me something for my stomach. I went on through the um, the first round of the Taxil. It was without incident. I didn't have any adverse effects from it or anything. I went home. Okay, fine. Next week, I go in for my second round of Taxil. This time I was able to get my fluids I was able to get my pre-meds. Then I got the taxel. As soon as I got up, once the taxel was finished, again, it hit me. I got to throw up. Oh, my God. They was like, what? So I started throwing up again. Second time that I've thrown up the entire time since I've been on chemotherapy. So we was like, what is going on? So we kind of chopped it up to anxiety induced. So they, want, they were really trying to convince me to get some Ativan. And I'm not having it. First of all, you know, I don't like taking medicine. And then I don't like taking anything that's going to make me groggy, sleepy, out of it. So Ativan was a pretty strong no for me. I was like, I don't want to be non-compliant, but I really don't want to take it. Okay, so then I went ahead and I suggested that we try another medication called Hydroxine or Adorex, which is normally prescribed for itching, but some doctors also prescribe it for... Um, anxiety because it's the uh, um it works kind of like benadryl it calms you down make you sleepy or whatnot so i was like well maybe i could try that so he was like okay i'll put it in for you he basically just put in whatever i asked so he put it in so the third round i took the dose before i got there it i think it may have worked or it could be a mental thing me saying yeah this is gonna help me calm down so i um i did not throw up that time so i was like okay it's good. And now I do notice that I'm having my my um strength back faster than with the other one. So it was not as strong as the um, AC, like the doctor said. So um, the fourth dose came. And for whatever reason, I can't find the hydroxine. Not that I really wanted to take it anyway. So I was like, I cannot find this medicine. I mean, it was a 90-day supply. 
So I'm looking everywhere for it, looking everywhere for it. The medicine is gone. I don't know what happened. It just disappeared. So I'm thinking I may have threw it away accidentally. So I was, I was like, okay, well, I just, I got to go and I got to get my nerves under control on my own because I don't have this medicine. So I only took one dose of the hydroxine. So I went in for the fourth dose. I did not throw up. So I was like, okay, I could do this. I could do this. I went in for the fifth one. Did not throw up. Then sixth one. Did not throw up. Okay. I did not throw up, but yet I was having problems with eating and um, gaining weight. I'm losing weight. So he was like, you should be, your body should be reacting better where you should start to pick up your weight or whatnot. And I wasn't, I was losing weight. So he was like, well, let's get some more blood work done and some more scans. And my heart rate was still high. He was like, let's get some more scans so we can kind of see, make sure everything is okay. I did not want to get another scan. Like that is so much stress. If the cancer don't kill me, the stress will. So he was like, we're going to get another scan. So I'm like, okay, oh my gosh. So I go in and I get the scan done on a Monday. That Tuesday, the results came back that Monday, but I couldn't see them. It was saying unable to access or something. So I was like, now, nah, did he make it where I'm not able to see it? Or is it just not ready available to be seen so i'm nervous at this point so that tuesday it was time for another treatment i go in and she was like oh he hasn't released your treatment for today so she was like let me call him so meanwhile i'm telling her all my symptoms i'm having neuropathy in my fingers i'm still having trouble with eating and drinking um like as far as appetite i'm constipated all the time um those are basically the troubles that I'm having with the chemotherapy. So she put all of that in a message. Finally, he responded back and he was like, he's going to hold the treatment. Okay, why are we holding the treatment? So immediately I went back to this scan that I just did the day before. So I'm like, okay, something must be on there. Something showing up on this scan and he want to stop the treatment like he did before. So... As soon as we left, we go to the parking lot. Me and my mom, we pull up the um, results and they were able to be pulled up. So everything from what I'm reading, it sound good. Like no signs of cancer or anything. The only thing that showed is said I had a skin lesion on my abdomen and they recommended that it be visualized upon physical examination. I don't understand that because I didn't have no skin lesion on my abdomen. I was like, okay, whatever. So I was like, well, why is he holding treatment? Because these this PET scan sound like it's good to me unless I'm misreading something and I'm missing something. So I had a follow-up appointment with him the following Monday, which was yesterday. So I go into his office. I'm, my nerves is on 100. Of course, when they get my vitals, my heart rate is high because I'm already nervous and everything. So um, <clears throat> he comes in and he basically wants to stop the chemotherapy because of the neuropathy that I'm having in my fingers and my feet. Neuropathy is a big side effect from this Taxil. Now, he did tell me from the beginning that he was going to monitor the neuropathy because I'm a nurse and find I'm going to need those fine skills, motor skills, fine motor skills to be able to come do my job as a nurse and he don't want to damage those nerves. So the neuropathy has been getting worse as the tax around has been going on. But in my opinion, I didn't want to stop treatment for it. I feel like it's something that I could just deal with. You know, there's something that's a part of it. I got to deal with it. But he was like, sometimes it's not reversible and sometimes it can get worse. So he was like, the first four rounds, which is the AC, he said it did 60% of what you got, 60% of the benefits from chemo with those four rounds. He said, and then being that you've already had six rounds of the Taxil, you've had the, uh, the most benefits from this chemotherapy to where now you got to look at the benefits and the risk. You got to look at it's like a fine line. So he was like, and I, my medical judgment 
is to stop the chemotherapy. He said, you would then go on to do your radiation. And then we're going to put you on hormone blockers, which I'm already on a hormone blocker. I left that out. I was started on tamoxifen. And that's a pill that I would have to take for five years. He said, well, after the radiation, he's going to take me off the tamoxifen and start me on a stronger hormone block blocker. And another medication that used to be prescribed for stage four um, cancer, but now it's been upgraded for stage two and three. And with those two pills together, it works really well from keeping the cancer from coming back. So that's the plan as of right now. At first, I didn't know how I felt about it because I felt like we had a plan. We're not sticking to the plan. But then I had to remember that I prayed to God to heal me, to heal my body, to bless the doctors with the thought process and how they prescribe medicines and whatnot. So I can't go in and doubting that he's not making the best educated decision. I got to go in thinking that this is what God wanted to happen. So as of right now, I'm off of the chemotherapy. And from what I read up on, it norm, radiation normally starts within three to four weeks after chemo. So I would be expecting a phone call from my radiology team at that point so I can get the radiology done. Then prayerfully go on with my life and live a happily ever after life. So that's where I'm at. So I go today to get my line taken out. Um, hopefully I get my strength back because my legs are weak. My fingers are constantly weak. Um, my toes, my toes, it comes and goes, comes and goes, but my fingers is constantly numb. My legs are numb when I walk. I can feel it when I walk. And I was really nervous. Like, am I going to have to walk with a cane or a walker soon? So hopefully... Like I said, I can get my strength up. I can start eating better and get my weight up and continue on with the next phase of the journey. Um, right now is November 1st. My birthday is this month. Of course, Thanksgiving. Then you got the holidays. Because at first, I wasn't trying to plan anything. I was like, how can I plan something for my birthday? And I don't even know how I'm feeling from day to day. Um, but I guess I can plan something now and be grateful and thankful, which I am. But that's it, you guys. That's the current update. I'm no longer on chemotherapy. And the next step is for me to do radiation. And I think the radiation, don't quote me, but I think it's going to be five weeks, four weeks, five times, five, how it go? Every day, like Monday through Friday for four weeks, I think. Don't quote me, though. That's a lot of time, but hopefully I tolerate it well so that I can complete this journey. But that's it, you guys. So don't forget, let me put out my public announcement. Um, like I said, today is November the 1st, so last month was Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Don't forget to get your mammograms, do your self-checks, remind someone else to do it as well. If you feel something, continue to go with your go to your doctor and let them know that it's there. If they keep brushing you off saying, oh, it's nothing, get a second opinion. Advocate for yourself. Because the earlier we catch it, they catch it, then the better is to treat. Now, how do you know if you caught it early? I mean, I don't know. They said they, mine was caught early, and that's what I can hope for. That is correct. But, um, yeah, check your tatas. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.